Welcome to the Back Bay. My name is Susan Jarrett and I'm a naturalist for the Newport Bay Conservancy. I'm here at Vista Point and I'm going to talk with you about birds at the Back Bay. This is a great place to talk about birds and to see birds. We have a really good perspective here. And um, birds are, this is the beginning of the tour and they're a very important part of the bay. They're the most visible life form that you'll see at the bay as not counting the plants, of course. And uh, so I want to give you some information about birds at the bay. Uh, the things that I'm going to talk about are endangered species, migration, and some of the particular individual species and their adaptations that you'll see here. So we can start by looking over my shoulder at a feature in the bay, this bay which is about a thousand acres, uh, three miles long. We're here down at the um, eastern end of it. And behind me, you'll see what we call Turn Island. This was an island that was created um, under the guidance of bird specialists here with material that was dredged from the bay. And the reason that we have it is to provide nesting space for an endangered species called the California Least Tern. And now these terns are not here right now because they're migrants who come from the uh, south up to the north. So they're here in the summer. But they have nesting practices that make them very vulnerable to predators. They sit down in the sand and make a shallow little um, indentation and lay their eggs, their clutch of maybe one to four eggs. And so it's very easy for predators uh, like foxes or dogs or other mammals to disturb the nests. And so uh, someone came up with the idea of creating this island and um, so that cuts them off from the predators and makes a safe nesting space in the summer. Um, so they're migrants from the south. Many of our migrants come from the north. And this is one of the most important features of the bay where birds are concerned is that it is a stop on what we call the Pacific Flyway. So all along the western coast, from Alaska through Canada, through the northwestern states of um, Washington, Oregon, and so on, uh, birds spend their summers up there and nest. And then when it starts to get cold, they come down the Pacific Flyway and they look for places to spend um, the winter. Um, as you've heard, the Back Bay is an estuary. It's one of the few wetlands on the California coast that is remaining undeveloped. Uh, more than 90% of our wetlands have been developed, and this is really regrettable because the birds need these wetlands um, as they migrate down during the winter. Uh, so this is, makes the bay very precious and very important to preserve from development. They come down for the weather and they come down for food. Greater food sources are here for them. Um, migration is a really mysterious process. We don't know a huge amount about it. Uh, we speculate that the birds get the idea to migrate when the days become shorter, when the temperature becomes colder. We think that um, there might be some factors of the Earth's magnetic field that inform them in their migrations. They might be guided by vision, uh, by sound, by the tidal movements, but somehow they make it hundreds, even thousands of miles in their migrations down here. We've got a lot of little bush tits around right now. It's really nice seeing them and hearing them. Bush tits are permanent residents, so we have, uh, the Back Bay is home to and host to over 200 species. So there are some birds who stay here year round, like the mallard ducks, for example. They're so beautiful, you can see those in the water. Uh, and many more birds that come in during the winter. So I'm talking to you now in late October. It's a lovely gray day. Um, as the fall moves along and the winter comes, we'll get many, many, many more migrants. Lots and lots of shorebirds, thousands of them will um, come in to visit us. So. Um, what are some of these birds that we're going to see in the Back Bay? Um, we think of the birds, and you'll think of them as you try to search for them when you're here, in terms of where you see them and what they're doing. So one of the first ways to think about seeing birds, or the first uh, places to see birds, is in the air. Uh, and you're going to see flying 
over the Back Bay, some of our predators. One of the most um, showy and um, amazing one is an osprey. It's a very large bird. Uh, the predator birds have really strong beaks and really, really um, frighteningly scary talons because they uh, dive into the water and eat a fish from the water. So you might see an osprey, you might see a white-tailed kite, or you might be really lucky and see a bald eagle. There's a dead tree down the way here that um, often during the winter is host to the bald eagle, which is a migrant here. Uh, one of the helpful things for seeing birds in the air and everywhere around is a pair of binoculars. So if you can come up with some binoculars, there are many different kinds and styles and you can get you know, inexpensive field glasses. Those really help. Um, another way to help identify birds is to have a really good bird book. Uh, the one I have is by David Sibley, but we have um, lots of choices um, in our um, shop, the Interpretive Center shop. It's not open right now, but you can visit the shop online and buy things in it. And one of the things you might want to buy if you didn't want to get a full-on bird book is uh, a field guide, a pocket field guide that will show you very uh, easily um, pictures of birds that and other creatures that inhabit our bay. So those are aids, helpful aids as you go along. So one of the best ways to identify birds and one of the best ways to understand what the bay is about is to recognize that we have six habitats. Uh, we talked about the air uh, and now we're going to talk about what you see around us starting with the open water, the marine habitat. So some of the birds that you might find commonly in the marine habitat are ducks, obviously. You'll see our beautiful mallard ducks with the green heads that are here all year round. You will definitely see a coot, a coot with a black head. There's so many of them. Um, as we get into the migration season, you might see a ruddy duck. You could tell its um, color by its name, a cinnamon teal duck. You might see an American widgeon, which is a beautiful bird. It's duck-like and has a stripe on its head that makes it look like it has a mohawk haircut. Um, you might see a western grebe, a very elegant bird with a curving neck, um, or an eared grebe. Um, as we move from the open water into the mud flats, these are the areas uh, the muddy areas around the islands and the edges. And the mudflats are wonderful sources of food for many kinds of birds, including our shorebirds. Um, one of the birds that comes to visit us during the migration season is this very curious, interesting bird called the long-billed curlew. We have lots of birds with uh, different bird bill shapes and lengths, and that enables them to um, get down into the mud and get the kind of food that they need. The snails, um, the crustaceans, the worms. So it's very, very carefully calibrated in a system that we call adaptation. Other birds in the mud flats you might find would be a marbled godwit, another bird with an interesting bill that kind of up curves. Uh, beautiful American avocets, they're here year round. They have a kind of orangey head. Um, you might see these adorable little sandpipers. They go in herds, little clusters, and they run all together. They're very amusing. Uh, dowagers, willets. Um, just to get a little bit stronger sense of how this adaptation of the bill works, uh, we have a visual here that shows different birds with their different bill links and where they get into the mud and find their food. So the marbled godwit has a little bit shorter bill than the curlew. He eats ghost shrimp, goby. Um, here's the dowager who is eating uh, this um, multi-segmented worm. Uh, then we have the western sandpiper, very short bill that eats these little neck clams and then the snails right on the top. You can definitely see a lot of snails around here. So it's really amazing how this system works and how well adapted the birds are to their habitats and to their food sources. So now that we've been in the mud flats, you'll see marshes. And these are areas that have growth but are also covered with water. Some of them are salt marshes. That means they're a little bit closer down to the ocean. Uh, the estuary being a place where salt and fresh water mingle. 
and others of them are freshwater marshes. So birds of the marshes include one of our endangered species, the clapper rail. That's the bird, it's kind of chicken-like, but it can make himself really skinny and he hides in the cord grass. Um, we have our really iconic birds and I hope you get to see one of these as you're walking down the path. Um, the great blue heron, really gorgeous, tall, blue-gray bird with a little um, top knot. Also, we have these two egrets, the great egret with a yellow bill and the snowy egret with a black bill. They're beautiful um, uh, wading birds and their adaptations include the very long legs and the three-pointed toes that give them a good stability as they, as they lean over, they're very still and they watch for fish, for um, eels, for sometimes they eat mammals too. So um, I hope you get to see one of those while you're here. Um, then we get to, uh, after the marshes, we get finally to what are called uplands, and that's what I'm sitting in right now. Uh, the uplands covered with lots of uh, brush, including um, our um, California sage that you'll see a lot of these days. Um, so birds in the upland that you might see include our hummingbirds. Um, I would be surprised if you came out here and didn't see or hear a hummingbird. This one is the um, Allens. It's noted because of its orange coloring. And um, hummingbirds are very gregarious. They're not frightened of people. They'll dive bomb you. They love to um, uh, suck the pollen out of these, uh, the nectar out of these beautiful plants. So look for hummingbirds. Look for this one and also look for the Annas, which has a gorgeous um, kind of raspberry colored throat. We call it a gorget. So those are the two hummingbirds that you'll see. You might see a common yellow throat, um, just like its name has beautiful yellow. Uh, you might see one of our visitors uh, during the migration season. It's called a white crown sparrow, and it's a lovely little bird that has two little white stripes on it and, a, and an orange bill. So these are some of the species that we really value here, and we make a really great um, uh, climate and place for them. And I hope you get a chance to come and take the walk and look for some of these birds. One of the um, pieces of advice I have for you as a person who loves nature and loves the Back Bay is to be uh, really especially cautious and vigilant about your use of plastics and polystyrene. So if you can really think about trying not to use plastics as much as possible, trying to recycle them when you do use them and really avoiding polystyrene because when the birds find those, they sometimes mistake them for food and that's really bad for the birds. So just a, a piece of advice about how to protect our beautiful birds here in the Bay. Thanks very much for listening to this video. I hope you listen to the other ones as well and watch them. Um, I hope you get a chance to come to the Bay. There's a lot of lively action here as you can see and plenty to see and hear especially where birds are concerned. Um, please visit us online and um, note all the wonderful things we have happening. Visit our store. And um, thank you again for watching.